Well, hello everyone and welcome to this second service in January. We're glad to have you with us and we hope that you are enjoying this wintry weather. Whether you're out inside in the warmth of your home looking out or if you're outside in the coldness looking in, we hope you're enjoying it. And we're glad to have you with us today. There are a few announcements to be brought to your attention. First of all, uh, it's a busy month for birthdays. And so happy birthday to Margaret Whittle and to Schofield Jackson and to Eric Robinson. Uh, you may be watching this on the 9th. So your birthdays are today. So welcome, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Angus tomorrow on the 10th, to Karen King on the 14th, to Isabel Sakuchi O'Connor on the 15th, and next Sunday to Jake Neville, little Jake Neville. So we hope that you're all having a, a good birthday time. Uh, we have, session has met and we have decided to go ahead with the official board meeting uh, by Zoom if we still cannot be open to having meetings by the 24th of January at seven o'clock. And so we will be setting up the, the way of, uh, we'll give out the information on how you can um, get, get onto Zoom. Uh, that'll be forthcoming. Also this coming week, I hope to be on study leave. And so Richard Fortier is planning on taking the service for next Sunday and in advance, I thank Richard for doing that, and it will be sent out by email. It will not be uh, taped this way, but you will be able to listen to it. So we're glad to have people in our congregation that are so willing to help, and so thank you, Richard. I believe that those are all the announcements presently to be brought to your attention. Today we gather once again, we realize that we are gathering in the presence of Christ, the light of the world. creation good. It is written that God sent his son Jesus into the world, not to judge it, but, but, but to, to save, save it. And Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. Such, Such is our reason for this hour of worship. Let us, Let us then rejoice, for we are gathered, gathered in the redemptive presence of God. Of God. And let us sing, Great God, we sing that mighty hand.
come together in prayer. The snow sparkles on the fields, the sun dazzles our eyes, and it's good to be alive, O oh God, and to be part of your world. Let us bring that aliveness into our worship this day. You're the one who can make us really alive. We come to hear your word and to celebrate our lives at that point where your word touches us and makes all things new. Please be with us as we reach out to you. And we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I have two scripture lessons this morning and today. The first is from the book, the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah is writing about the one who will come and who will judge in righteousness and goodness. Many people see this as a description of who Jesus will be. Isaiah writes, This is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. May God add his blessing to his holy word. And then reading from the gospel according to St. John. The gospel writers wrote with different audiences in mind. And here John is writing with the Greeks in mind. And so John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
May God bless this holy word, both now and forever. Some of you may be watching or reading this service on the second Sunday of January and doing exactly what January means. This month is named for Janus, the Roman god of beginnings, with the god being symbolized by a man looking backwards and forwards. And so indeed, although I personally like to leave up the Christmas decorations for some time, some of you may be putting them away and thinking about what you want or hope to be doing this coming year. And so in January, we're looking back and we're looking forward. Like anything that we want to do, our goals may take some planning. We need to start someplace. For an education, we start out learning our ABCs and learning to read and to write, to add and subtract, to multiply and divide. To cook a dessert, we want to be sure that we have the required ingredients. And there's a lot of new structures going up in Chattagay. Builders want to make sure that the land is capable of being built on, not too much sand and water. And then they put a strong base down upon which to build. Both amusing and sad stories can be told of when laying a proper foundation, of not having a proper plan was not followed. A lady tells the story of being out in a camping park in a camper, and for a treat, she decided to make bread. Part ways through, she realized the flour was so old that it had little worms in it. And so not wanting anyone to know, she threw the whole messed up recipe into the outhouse toilet. A few hours later, a couple of terrified neighbors dashed in saying that this lady had to go and see a huge mushroom that all of a sudden was growing in the toilet. And when she went out to see, she realized that her failed bread had been discovered because the yeast was now having it all rise. Our plans can go awry. As we start this new year, we realize that some of our desires may also not go as we want. We may feel like we are presently living on a roller coaster with the news reports changing sometimes hour by hour on what we can or cannot do. Or we may feel like we are on a runaway train with no engineer in charge. Or the engineer doesn't know how to make it stop because the brakes have failed. As we step into a new year, I am glad for my faith in God. Christmas has once again reminded us that God so loved the world that he came to us in Jesus. I am glad I am not an atheist living as if there is no rhyme or reason for this world. Abraham Lincoln said, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how we could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. Even a cursory look up into the sky could leave us amazed, right? For example, the order of day and night. The sun doesn't rise in the west one day and in the east another day. We can say that on a December 1st in our part of the world, that is the shortest daylight day of the year. And then the daylight starts increasing again because the earth is again moving that way. I'm not quite sure what the correct way of saying it is, but it's moving, it's on the move. And, and we can do this, we can, we, can, we can judge this consistently because that's what's happening. More and more studies are revealing the enormity and the fascinating design of the universe. There is order and design to this world. Anyone can realize it. And so if there is design, the rational conclusion would be there is a designer. The scriptures say in the first book of the Bible, 
In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. Centuries later, the disciple John would start his account of Jesus by saying, in the beginning was the Word. John is calling Jesus Word here. And he says the Word, Jesus was with God, and the Word, Jesus was God. Now this may seem a little confusing, but it's, it's actually very interesting and enlightening. John was writing with a Greek audience in mind. And the Greeks were highly regarded as intellectuals. And so for them, the word, word, had great meaning attached to it, as word for them, <clears throat> excuse me, meant reason. So John was saying, in the beginning, reason existed. And reason was with God, and reason was God. Jesus is saying, when we look at Jesus, we are looking at personified reason and wisdom. Are we not wanting wisdom to be predominant these days? We're hearing a lot of talk by a lot of people, but who do we trust for wisdom? What credentials do some of these people have? The Greeks also believed that what we can see and experience here physically is an earthly indication, a shadow, a pattern of something greater that we cannot see. For example, love here is only a shadow of what is supremely and perfectly experienced in the unseen world. John then was saying that Jesus who pre-existed in eternity is the supreme and perfect one of truth and life. John writes that in Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. Biblical commentator William Barclay points out that, Jesus, that John begins and ends his gospel talking about Jesus being life, and that life is the opposite of destruction, condemnation, and death. Don't we want that life, the opposite of destruction, condemnation, and death? Also, light in the same statement is mentioned. And light in the scripture often means that which brings order. Can you see how our trust in him for wisdom, truth, and life can make a difference as we go into 2022? When we look for leadership or to hire someone, don't we look at that person's credentials? Can we see how Jesus has the right credentials for leading us? This year will no doubt have its challenges, but as we put away our decorations, let us not put away our reason for having celebrated. Jesus has come. The light of the world, the life of the world has come. He's here. He's with us. The prophet Isaiah wrote about the just leader who would come saying that he will bring justice to the nations. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. When it looks like everything is falling apart, let us remember that God is here in Jesus, looking to lead us if we will let him. I read about a young man by the name of Tracy Bailey, who stood out, who stood in the White House Gardens some years ago to receive the Teacher of the Year Award from the United States President. Fifteen years earlier, he had stood before a judge and received a five-year sentence to a youth center, one rung below a federal penitentiary for major disorderly conduct. And now here he was in this 
confinement, solitary confinement in this youth center with only a bed, a sink, and a toilet. And he realized what he had done. And he cried out to God for help. He started to take an in-prison Bible study and correspondence college courses. He was released on probation and he continued his studies. Um, and, and, he, and he continued on his studies. When I find that page, I'll continue on my studies. <laughs> I found it. He continued on and he eventually became a science teacher. And now he was being recognized as the teacher of the year. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? The Lord took him a bruised reed and gave him life and purpose. And the Lord wants and delights to do that for all who will trust him. Jesus the Word, reason and truth and light and order has come, and he has started his kingdom. He cares and he desires to give us purpose. He has not left us. And when we look for leadership this year, will we look to him because he is indeed worthy? Thanks be to God. We're going to sing, I am the light of the world.
has come together in our pre-prayer, singing that beautiful, old, strong verse of Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Father, on this first month of a new year, we gather in spirit in the warmth of our homes on a wintry day. We may be looking to the future, but also thinking about the past with its joys and challenges. And as we often can see the footprints of people and animals and birds in the fallen snow at this time of year, we may be thinking symbolically about the footprints that we have left on the year that has passed. Some of those footprints leave us smiling with warm and happy memories. Other footprints leave us wanting to erase them and wishing that we could start over. We thank you that because Jesus came to bring us forgiveness and life, that we can start over again. Jesus has said, behold, I make all things new. And so as we pause to worship, May we then rejoice in him and in the hope and renewal that Jesus brings. And as we step into this new year, we do so with a mixture of anticipation and fear. We want this to be a good year, a positive year, but we fear loss and failure and pain. We thank you that in Jesus you know what it is to be human and that for those who choose to follow you, you walk with us. We also thank you that in love you are still seeking the trust of those who want nothing to do with you. May we reach out in love and grace and truth to those who believe and to those who don't. Lord, we pray for those in leadership in these very trying times. We ask that you might give our leaders your wisdom we pray for all those whose lives are more challenging because of the work they do. Law enforcement, health care, teachers, staff at restaurants and stores. We pray for those who are ill, that you might relieve their suffering, that they might get the help they need. We pray for those who mourn, that you might be their comfort and hope. We pray for those who are lonely and feel forgotten. We pray for the young in this world, that you might help them to make the right decisions for their lives. We pray for the elderly and the challenges they face in their age span. We pray for those who are imprisoned either falsely or because they need time out because of the injustice that they have done. O oh Lord, we need you. We pray that you might forgive us for the wrongs that we have done and help us to trust you with our lives as we go forward. And we will thank you, and we will praise you, and we will anticipate your coming again with rejoicing. You have not forgotten us, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
We have different ways of talking about God being with us. He's our strength and our hope. He's our foundation. He's our light. He's also an anchor. Let us sing, Will Your Anchor Hold? shaky yet let us go forth on the solid ground of trust and faith life may seem disconnected and filled with misfortune yet let us go forth connected with God and with each other the world may be hurting and forgetful of what really matters in life so let us go forth and bring hope and healing and love to all people and may, may the, the love, love of God, God the, the grace, grace of Christ, and, and the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all. all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
bless you, everybody. Hope you have a great week.